the entrance antiphon for Monday of the sixth Sunday of Easter. <clears throat> Christ, having risen from the dead, dies no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all you angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison Christ eleison let us pray. <clears throat> o oh God, who gave blessed John the first to be shepherd of the whole church and make him resplendent with wondrous virtue and teaching. Grant that we who venerate the merits of such a bishop may shine with good deeds before others and burn with love before you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We set sail from Troas, making a straight run for Samothrace, and on the next day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, a leading city in that district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. We spent some time in that city. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate along the river, where we thought there would be a place of prayer. We sat and spoke with the women who had gathered there. One of them, a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth, from the city of Thyatira, a worshiper of God, listened, and the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul was saying. After she and her household had been baptized, she offered us an invitation. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my home, she prevailed on us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord, the Lord takes, takes delight, delight in his people. people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord, Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, 
the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me, and you also testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you this so that you may not fall away. They will expel you from the synagogues. In fact, the hour is coming when everyone who kills you will think he is offering worship to God. They will do this because they have not known either the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And so today uh, is we celebrate this feast day of John the First, and but also today is the birthday of a great man, a great saint, uh, which many of us may some might have met, seen in person, John Paul II. Today it's his hundredth birthday, so happy birthday, John Paul II, and we ask for his intercession today. And uh, you know today in this gospel, our Lord is. You know, many of these Gospels in the next couple of days and these weeks up to Pentecost are speaking about the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. And, uh, you know, our prayer is that, you know, hopefully through the grace of God that we'll be back together worshiping the Father in Mass uh, at Pentecost. We'll see. We have to pray for that if it's God's holy will. But from his childhood, uh, Karawatiwa, which is his name before he became John Paul II, his father instilled in Carol a strong devotion to the Holy Spirit. And uh, in the book, The Five Loves of uh, John Paul II, which is a great book, he recalled his father telling him, you don't pray to the Holy Spirit enough. You ought to pray to him. That's funny, someone telling John Paul II doesn't pray enough to the Holy Spirit. But uh, in that time, maybe it was true. And his father gave him a little book, prayer book, on the Holy Spirit. And, uh, Carol, and, and John Paul II used his book throughout his life. And daily, he would, re he would recite the following prayer. Holy Spirit, I ask you for the gift of wisdom to better know you and your divine perfections, for the gift of understanding to clearly discern the spirit of the mysteries of the holy faith, for the gift of counsel that I may live according to the principles of this faith, for the gift of knowledge that I may look for counsel in you and that I may always find it in you, for the gift of fortitude that no fear or earthly preoccupations would ever separate me from you. And for the gift of piety, that I may always serve your majesty with a filial love. For the gift of the fear of the Lord, which I, I may dread sin, which offend you, O oh my God. And he prayed this every day. You know, and, and so today we, we begin to pray to the Holy Spirit. You know, yesterday I was sort of reminiscing and just sort of praying about, you know, I'm a little bit discouraged about, you know, we didn't have the summer camp. And I remember I kind of flipped it. I said, All right, well, you know what? I guess the important thing is this is, you know, we're, I, just, I was kind of praying a little bit to John Paul II. I'm thinking, you know, we're supposed to help all these kids in this pandemic and all this. But, but then it just hit me as like, well, what does God want? You know, what is God's holy will? And I think in, in uh, we will talk just briefly about the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom is the, the first and the primary of all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're, whereby <clears throat> that we um, see things on, on the way that God sees them. And other earthly realities or events in our life, God gives the gift to see it from his point of view. And it's a very important gift because otherwise we look at it just from a natural point of view or, you know, things that don't go our way or, you know, we're discouraged because our, our plans didn't go the way we want or we're going through some bit of suffering or a trial. Um, you know, if we ask for the gift of wisdom, God gives us the gift through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the Advocate, to see it from his perspective. Maybe another way of looking at it is this, is if you hike, you know, it's, it's one thing to look up a mountain but it's so much more beautiful when you get to the top and look down from the mountain. And so the gift of wisdom is whereby we kind of see reality from the mountaintop, from God's perspective. And, and, um, and, and it also gives us grace to, to persevere and to keep uh, trying to, to be holier. So today we ask for that gift of wisdom, whatever we're going through in our particular lives, to see things from God's perspective. And as the father of John Paul II said, we don't pray to the Holy Spirit enough. You know, and today we, we as we approach uh, Pentecost, we just uh, turn our prayers to the Holy Spirit to guide us, especially with the gift of wisdom. And now we bring our petitions to the Lord. 
For the church that the spirit who bears witness on behalf of Christ may make her witness strong even in the face of persecution. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians may reach out to praying hearts as Paul did to Lydia. That the number of people who stand up for the right to justice and to human dignity may increase in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who have been with Jesus from the beginning of our lives may testify to him as Lord by our faith, our moral truth, and our joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, especially those who have asked for our prayers, that they may experience the divine love and healing that will bring a new song of praise and exaltation into their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. That our beloved dead may sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful enrolled in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Gerard Schmitz, for which this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And we turn to Our Lady and ask for her powerful intercession, as together we pray. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, thou amongst women, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. <clears throat> Grant our supplications, we pray, O Lord, that the sacrifice we present on the feast day of blessed John the First may be for our good, since through its offering you have loosed the offenses of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, <clears throat> always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you made all things to be sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni Suncelia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Mortem Tuam, Annunciamus Domine, Et Tuam, Resurrectione Confiteor, Donec Venias. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you, Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. On you steady, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you steady, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion. I wish my Lord to receive you with the spirit of humility, purity, and devotion which your most holy mother receive you with the spirit and fervor of the saints. <clears throat> the 
the communion answer fine. Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Alleluia. Let us pray. <clears throat> May the power of the gifts we have received, Lord God, on this feast day of blessed John the First, fill us with its effects, both to sustain our moral life and to gain us the joy of unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, so today's schedule, uh, church, is uh, we're going to have confessions from 12 to 1 and again from 6 to 8. Adoration will be, as usual, from 12 to 9. You can sign up on the Sign Up Genius. And also, uh, beginning a sort of a uh, catechesis as we continue. Um, I'm going to call this the Corona Catechesis. <laughs> anyway, but uh, this, this week we're going to have um, uh, the Ten Commandments. And uh, so I'll start with the first commandment. And just a little sort of uh, overview of what the commandments are. And uh, that will be today, probably posted this afternoon. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke when we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Regina Celi, Laetare, Alleluia, Quia Quemeruisti Portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit Secutixi, Alleluia, Ora Pronobis Deum, Alleluia.